a positive and a negative two. Five times itself negative two. Just think how that sounds. Five times itself negative two times. That doesn't make any sense. So you're supposed to do something first with a negative two power. Right here, rule number eight. A negative exponent will mean reciprocal. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to flip it. If it's in the numerator, you flip it down to the denominator. If it's in the denominator, it's got to be under something. It's under one. One over a to the n. If it's in the denominator, you flip it up. If you flip it up, it would be un over a one, but anything over one is just so. So the first thing you do with five to the negative two, reciprocal. One over five to the positive two, and five squared is 25. Well, 25. Okay. You call it that. Yeah. You want to read the negative? When I flip it up or flip it down, it becomes a positive. If I carry the negative with it, you mean like negative 25? Mm -hmm. But the five was never negative. I wouldn't change the sign. I wouldn't be multiplying negative five. It was never a negative number. The only thing that negative two up here does, it is reciprocal. Once it flips down, it's a positive exponent. It never changes the sign of the base. It never changes the sign of the base at all. The only way I can change a positive 25 into a negative 25, I would have to multiply by a negative one. I have to multiply by a negative one. That's the only way to change the sign of something. And I'm not multiplying by anything. I'm just looking. Thirty-six and a half. Thirty-six times itself a half a time. Not thirty-six times one half. Because I will see a lot of 18s on this. But it's not 36 times one half. Unless you don't write it correctly. You will lose points if you don't write it correctly. It's an exponent. But I will see you with a 36 to the half. That's not 36 to the half. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quandary when I grade a test like this. That's why I got to point this out. When I grade tests like this, I don't know if you mean 36 and a half, 36 times a half, or 36 to the half when you leave something that looks like that. Because that's not a power. A power is a superscript, the base to a power. So the power has to be a little smaller in the top right hand corner, superscript. Otherwise, I can't tell. When you look at your test, some of you are going to think it's times one half, but the whole chapter is exponents. So why would it be times one half if we're doing exponents? Which means if you're not sure, come up and ask. Don't guess. Just come up and ask. Is that a times one half? Is that a times two? Is that a times negative two? Don't guess, ask. And then if you ask, I can make sure you know, and then you, if you know, then you're going to be able to do it. That is the key. If you leave that as an answer, then I would do too big. I'm going to use your little one, minus one. Because again, it's not an X mark. Spelling counts. Spelling should count all the time. Especially these days, you have spell check. Everything is correcting everything for us now. Which is kind of sad because now we don't pay attention to anything that we do because somebody's going to correct it for us. The machine. Works. And that's not a good thing. I've seen Terminator a lot of times. It's happening now. Yeah. Stephen Hawking. Who Stephen Hawking was? Check out the movie, The Theory of Everything. Okay, with Eddie Redmayne. Okay, 
Stephen Hawking, was diagnosed with Lou Gehrig's disease in 1967. He was given two years to live. He passed away in 2017 or 2018, I believe. He's a cosmologist, not a cosmetologist, but a cosmologist who's looking for the theory, the unification theory that describes one, one math equation to describe how everything has happened. Quantum mechanics uh, basically united with gravitational theory. Einstein stuff. He was considered to be one of the smartest people in the world, but he's also one that was confined to a wheelchair, wasn't able to speak. He was hooked up to a, a computer and he would use eye movements or sometimes when he could still find some small motor movements, was able to move a mouse to highlight sentences that he would say. And he had that computer voice. Okay. Well, as far as people on the, on the planet, but trapped in a body that didn't work. He couldn't even breathe for himself. He ended up also the whole, you know, being married three times once he contracted the disease because he kept cheating on his wife. I didn't say married his cousin. So we'll do this. Yeah. Very kind of and he married her because he said she made good sausages. Possibly. <laughs> was it Tesla that tried who, who electrocuted the horse or the elephant? Was that Edison or Tesla? Was Edison to prove that Tesla's was dangerous? I think. Yeah. That was kind of love. Could it? Well, yeah, Jerry, when she was 14. Yeah. We're such an involved species. Yeah, yes. I see one skinny sleep with this many cousins on a time. I don't know. <laughs> I don't really know. Well, I mean, uh, it wasn't illegal. His first wife was a physicist as well. And uh, she did a lot of the calculations and math for him. Because he, would, he wouldn't want to be bothered with all the minutia. He was into the theory and the thought theory, coming up with the experiments and what if, what if, what if. But then to do math, it was like, okay, okay, just don't want to fiddle with that. I want to focus on the experimentation. What's the Minutia. The, the details, all the, all the little putting the pieces together. Now he does, but the, the, the calculations that kind of take us there, he goes through that, he understands that, but he doesn't want to sit down and do it. He was a CD student. I've seen, you know, documentaries where they show the report cards. And he wasn't a great student because he didn't want to sit down and do the work. My son is really smart. But he's also a lazy student. He never studied for his SATs. And he, he scored higher than all his friends. And they're all AP geniuses. And he only took it once. Back then, it was out of 2,400. I think he scored 2,180 something. And it's like, you know, you're, you're an ass. No, not to he, he Never passed an AP calculus prep test. And uh, the night before, when I was trying to help him, he has a migraine. I'm going, you know, go work tomorrow. And uh, yeah, he ends up passing with a four to five. It's like, all right, you, you, you take tests really well, but you don't do homework and you don't want to go to class. You don't want to wait for the morning. So that's going to be hard to do. When he actually quit, college and dropped out and he had to get a job and he had to be on the job at 6 a.m. for out of time because working you didn't have to take homework with you didn't do any work at home there was nothing when the job was done at the end of the day and that's what he he hated his job for eight years so then he's now a vet tech which he gets to play with dogs or help dogs all the time And he's really good at it, so which you know, he's happy. 
He's a, he's a better father than I ever was. He's probably even sure he's a better husband than I ever was, or that I am. But anyway, his wife is straight A ever since kindergarten through her master's degree. So they offset each other really well. well I remember going to a movie. His wife, well, his girlfriend had that you know, say her, every, the whole family, and she has her computer before the movie started. Computer's open, studying for her final the next day, and she has like over 100% of the class. And it's like, what are you doing? You know, it's like, you're going to be fine. Not times to have to that. So, out of all these, it's an exponent. So it's here. One over two, one half, is the nth root of that base. So if the denominator, the denominator is always the root you're going to take. So if that's a two, it's a square root. Now when you convert this, you rewrite it. You don't put a two in that knot. When it's a two, it's just a square root. Now if you want to put a two, that's fine. But I'm telling you, you're never going to see anything else ever put a two. When you just see the radical sign, it's just a square root. We're looking for a two of a kind. What, in, in the end, like the whole picture here, what is the point of simplifying it from 36 and a half? Like, why would you apply that? Well, I want to take the square root of something. Oh, okay. Yeah. So if I have x squared here, so here's the reason x squared, where we just came from, equals 25. So we have to undo the square. And we want to get what's the answer? So we didn't do this in the last step. Why did we take the square root? How did it become a square root? What, 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 what? We just went, to, we said square root and this is square. We're trying to solve for x, you know, for x. So what that means is if we want x equals what, then what we want is x to the First, to get x by itself, we need x to the first power. To get x to the first, I have to undo that power of 2. Now, dividing by 2 does not undo that because it's not a multiplication problem. It's an exponent. So dividing both sides by 2 doesn't work. So somehow I have to undo that 2 up here. So what we do... Because this is all that was there. This is all that they had to work with, was exponent rules. Is you would have to raise this to get a one, you would raise this side to the one half power. If I raise the left side to the one half, I gotta raise the right side to the one half. And so what does that mean? That means that over here, rule number two, power to a power, you multiply. So this is x to the 2 times 1 half. And over here we have 25 to the 1 half. And 2 times 1 half is x to the 2 over 2. 2 over 2 is 1. That's how we get x to the first. That's how we know the 1 half of each side, power of the 1 half, is going to undo that x squared and give us x. Now we just have to figure out what the heck does this mean. Over here, we're looking at what time what is 25. Well, 5 times 5, we know the answer. So how do we undo the power? What is going to be our rule to undo this? What operation, what are we going to call it? And so eventually, what's the quicker way to do instead of powers? Because the notation starts getting really messy. Especially when students' handwriting is so bad, we change it to the radical sign. I mean, so my, my, I guess I'm there over probably in some So before, for example, we were solving equations, now we're finding the equation to solve. No, no, no. We're still solving equations when we have. But the only way to undo exponents were other exponents. Okay. So we don't, we can only undo powers with other exponents. So we're doing it. Yeah. So basically, this is this was everything. Yeah. 
So when we undid a power of two, we had to use exponents to undo the exponent. So all that happened was this x to the one half became square root instead of a one half power. We don't write it. We convert it. So it's just a simplified version of trying to break that down. <laughs> so oh, so what the boys blows that to his language. This is the exponential form. That's the radical form. They're the same thing. They mean you're going to do the same thing. So sometimes it's easier to work with something as an exponent. Sometimes it's better to work with something as a radical. In calculus, if you're there there, and you want to take, don't worry about what it does is. If I want to take the derivative with respect to x of x square root x, we don't have a rule for this. We have a rule for the derivative with respect to x of x to the 3 over 2. That is x to the 3 over 2. Okay? And the derivative would equal 3 over 2 times x to the 1 half. Again, don't worry about what I just did. But I got x to the 3 over 2 because of <clears throat> exponent rules. x square root x is x times, this is x to the what? What's the exponent for right here? One half. And when we multiply, rule number one, when I multiply the same base, I add the powers. So this is x, what's the exponent here on the x? One. So this is x to the one plus one half. So this is one plus a half is three over two. That's how I convert this into this. Now we can use this called the power rule. When I take the derivative of the power, I use the power rule. All these rules for the power rule, the chain rule, the quotient rule, the product rule. If a, uh, Oh my gosh. I already said, actually, so chain rule. Got all the uh, trig rules, got the inverse trig rules, got the logarithm rules, got the exponent rules. There's 24 basic differentiation. You know how you have to memorize certain rules to be like these are 10? In fact, you have 24 basic differentiation and then 20 basic integration. So you have 44. And if you don't know them by heart, then you can't do the work. You have to be able to add in the basis of the same power to a power. If you don't have that first step done, it doesn't work because you can't make it up. All right. So this is just square root 36. I understand this. This is not going to make sense to me nearly as well. What's square root 36? Six. 36 to the half is six. You have a calculator, so you shouldn't like, you know. What? Four hundred. Did you need a calculator? No. About 20 to the third. But I'm all one by three. Eight thousand. What about 20 
to the I'm not sure not being present. Twenty to the fifth. Well, if I open three, it's eight thousand, and I skip four. Thirty-two thousand. I went from four hundred to a thousand. Three million. Now, here's why. 20 is 2 times 10, isn't it? Yes? Okay. To the fifth. Rule number three. A times B to the N. So, when you have a product to a power... Each factor is raised to the individual power. I raise A to the F times B to the F. So I can do 2 to the 5th times 10 to the 5th. So 2 to the 5th is 32. You should know your powers of 2. Remember the chart of powers. And 10 to the 5th is the 1 with 5 zeros. So 5 zeros. So it's 3,200 thousandths, which means it's a 32 with five zeros. That's all. Or you can look at it and go, all right, two to the fifth, 32, and then 10 to the fifth, I'm going to have five zeros, 32 and 10 to the five zero. So if I had 30 to the third, what's three to the third? Another one you should already know by heart. Three to the third is. Three times three times three is? 27. And then how many zeros? Three zeros. 27 now. Okay. That's why in your chart of powers, Obviously, it listed one all the way across. I listed two all the way to the power of 10. The more power of the two, you know, the better off you're going to be, especially here in chapter four. I listed three all the way to the 10, but you really should go at least three to the six. And you can, you will be able to use calculator. But the more you just know and recognize, again, it's like recognizing the factors of 56. 56, seven times eight. 56, four times 14. Okay. The powers of four. Powers of four are related to the powers of two because four is two times two. Powers of five. This one. Five to the fourth is 625. That's going to happen a lot. Powers of six. Six to the third is 216. That's going to happen a lot. Probably maybe a six to the fourth. Seven, eight, nine. Nine to the third, 729. So look at the powers of 10. Because every time you raise it to a power, you just put one more zero. But right here, 10 to the zero. We look at this column. All the answers are what? It's the power of zero. They're all ones. Because a 10 would be a one with zero zeros. Because everything to the zero power, rule number seven, is one. Except zero. 
So a 10 to the zero is a one with no zeros, a one. But a 10 to the first is just 10, one zero. 10 squared is 100, a one with two zeros. 10 to the 10 would be a one with 10 zeros. But I also put on the list, it's 20 to the 10. Because 20 to the 10 is 2 to the 10 and then 10 zeros. 2 to the 10th is 1,024 and then 10 zeros. Okay. Just to see the pattern. <clears throat> and that's what it's about. Math is about. So math has been described as the science of pattern. There's pattern to their Okay. All right. A fraction, okay, right here, number four, A or B to a power is the numerator and denominator both raised to that same power. It's just like the product to a power. A product to a power, each factor gets a power. A fraction to the power, the numerator and denominator both get the power. So this one is rewritten as 64 to the one half over 49 to the one half. And the one half power is a square root, square root of 64 over square root 49. And the square root of 64 is eight, and the square root of 49 is seven. It's predicated on translating. I don't know what the heck I'm doing when I look at 64 over 49 to the half. So what else does that mean? What does it mean when I raise something to the half? One half is a square root. We write it. If what you're looking at doesn't make sense, if what you're looking at can't be done, this is what you use to rewrite it. Change it into what can be done. hundred twenty five to the two thirds. What they must see in Hawking when he was still lecturing, but he couldn't speak so people could understand. He had, uh, had he had teaching assistants who understood his mumblings. So he would mumble and then his teaching assistants would write whatever he was mumbling. That's what happened. Somebody could buy it. Transfer. No, let's go. 25 to the two thirds is 25. Now, not because I'm looking at it, because I'm translating it and then I'm doing the problem. 125 to the two thirds power. So it's not one over two. The numerator is now something different other than a one. So now instead of rule nine, it's rule 10. So here's rule 10. Rule 10 has two options. How do you know which one? I'll pick one and see. Well, which one should I pick? No, I don't know. Me, me, my, mo. Well, what was that going to be? It's a bitsy spot. I don't know. If you think to do, pick one. Close your eyes and point to the point. You just got to pick one, though. You can't stare at it. That's not going to do it. The denominator is always the radical. It's the index. It's the root you're going to take. So it's right here, the nth root. The numerator now is the power of the base. A to the n power. So that's how you can rewrite it. The denominator is always the radical that we're going to take, the nth root. It was the same as number nine, one over n. It was that square root or p root, whatever. Or a to the m over n, still an nth root of a, but you raise it to the m power after you finish the root. So you either 
raise it to the power, then take the root, or you take the root, then raise it to the power. And the only way to know which one is which is the practice. <clears throat> and maybe you'll start to see it. And maybe you fill in the powers in that chart many times so you start to recognize which way to go. So this one, the denominator is a three, so it's a cube root. The base is 125, so that's the radicand. The numerator is a two, so that's a power. So it's the cube root of 125 squared, if I use this first one. Four. The denominator is a three, so it's a cube root of 125. That's the uh, base, so that's the radicand. And then I'm going to square it after I take the cube root. Either one. I didn't do this in my head yesterday. I don't think I can do it today either. So here's the thing. This is the cube root of 15,625. When I square it. Okay. So now you got to break it out of cube root jail. To break it out of cube root jail, we need three of a kind. So give me two numbers that go into, because we have factor, factor tree. Break it apart with two. Give me two numbers that go into 15,625. You know it ends in a five, so you can take, you know, divide the five. But the nice thing about things that end in 25s, if it ends in a 25, 25 goes into it. If it ends in two zeros, 25 goes into it. If it ends in a 50, 25 goes into it. If it ends in a 75, 25 goes into it. Think about it. 25 goes into 100, 125, 150, 175. 25 goes into anything with a quarter value. So, give me two numbers that go into 15,625. What's that? 30, 30, 30 times what? Times five. Times five. So, you want to use five and 3,125. So, now you've got to bring the five down. And what's going to go into this? So five times six twenty-five. Yeah. So I have uh, got to make sure you bring all the branches down, and then what's going to make six twenty-five? So five times one hundred twenty-five. So here's these, and then what's going to make that? Five times the shaky we need to do in five. Yeah. Five times four. Okay. I'm on a roll. So now we have five and a five and a five and a five and a five times five. Mm -hmm. Which is absolutely fine. Just make sure your branches come all the way down to the bottom. Because you don't want to leave any fives behind. And we're looking for three of a kind. So three threes make a run for it. One five breaks out and lifts. These three fives get a run for it, only one five breaks out and lives. On the outside, if they multiply back together, the answer is 25. Fine. Now, you can pick whatever you want to pick. Well, let's think about where we just came from, how we got 15,625. 
it was the cube root of 125 squared, right? From here. Right? Yes? That was the problem. We converted it to this, and then we made this. You know what you could have factored with? 125 times 125. Because we just came from there. And 125, if you recognize it, you know how I've told you that when you do the 8, it's from now on, it's going to be 2 times 2 times 2? Instead of going 2 times 4 and then 2 times, and you get 2 times 2? Okay. 125, 5 times 5 times 5, because it's 5 to the third. On your exponent table, and 5 to the third. 5 to the third count. Yeah. 125 is 5 to the third. Six of, I was told you about 5 going across so many. 625. 25 times 25. Know that one. Okay? It helps. It's not a race. Do what you need to do to get the right answer. It's not a race. You don't get extra points for turning it in early. You need to turn it in by 11 or yeah, 1150, but you don't get points for like, I'm done in 10 minutes. Let's try this now. You can write it like this, which means you've got to break apart a huge number. Or I take the cube root first, and then I'm going to square the answer. Because now I'm taking the cube root of a much smaller number. This is 25 times 5. So you have a 5 times 5 and a 5. It's a cube root. I need three of a kind. So those three fives make a run for it. One five makes it out. Now that five that made it out is still inside the parentheses that I have to square. So now five squared, one five. So you need to think about it two different ways. Which one do you think is gonna be simpler? Sometimes, the one on the left, sometimes the one on the right. Six. First thing you have to do is what? The very first thing. It's right in front of you, it's just same. Just like the problem number one, what was the first thing we had to do with the first question? When you read it, whether out loud in your mumble it or in your head, nine to the negative three over two? How do we do nine times itself negative three over two times? The first word that comes in you know, that you spout out, nine to the negative? That doesn't make any sense. Three over two is going to be one of the, you know, that's the next thing you got to deal with. But nine to the net, I don't raise things to negative powers. I only raise things to positive powers. So what are you supposed to do? If you're going, if you're going to make a difference with your ability of mathematics, you have to speak up and engage. You cannot passively. Wait, because right now I know the answer is bouncing around in a lot of your heads. The more you communicate it, the better student you're going to be at this, because you have to build your confidence. The first thing you see is that negative exponent. What happens with a negative exponent? Put it here. You flip it. We don't raise things to negative power. We need positive power. So rule number eight, they have a negative power, you flip it down. So this is now going to be one over. 
9 to the positive 3 over 2. First thing. And then we don't raise anything to a fraction. We convert it into a radical. So a 3 over 2 power. So this is one over the denominators of two, so it's a square root. The new the base is a nine, so the nine is the radicand. Now I'm either going to take the square root of nine and I'm going to cube it first, or I'm going to go one over the square root of nine. And I'll cube the answer after I take the square root. Okay. Which of those, this first one or that second one, which one looks like the better choice? If you think it through, if I raise 9 to the third, it becomes a bigger number. Then I got to figure out its square root, break it down. Or I'm taking the square root of 9, and then I'm just going to raise it to the third power. Out of those two possibilities, you got to make a choice. Am I going to turn left or right? Am I going to go one on the right one on the left, or the one on the left? First one or second one? Second one. Second one. Because the square root of 9 is just 3. So this is just 1 over 3 to the 3rd. And 3 to the 3rd is 27. 1 over 27. Now, this one... 9 to the third, just trust me, is the square root of 729. Now you got to figure out the square root of 729. So then you got to start breaking it down. How about you use three nines? So then you have three, another three, and another three. So a three escapes, another three escapes, and another three escapes. Three times three times three is 27. But now you better remember it's one over the 27. Because that 27 is in the denominator. But which one was the easier way to go? Hey, I've done these before. I've set these up before. Seven over here. One over one thousand to a negative two thirds. So what happens there? First thing about that negative x one, what do you do? You're going to flip it up. This one goes up. So now it's just 1,000 to a positive two thirds. Negative x one means reciprocal. You're going to flip it. So now we write it as a radical. The denominator is a three, so it's a cube root. And I want to point something out. The cube root, that three has to be inside that little notch. Because if you write it like this, or even like this, that looks like three times the square root. If it's a cube root, it's written like that. That's the spelling of a cube root. 
Selling matters. So it's a cube root of 1,000. And I can either, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to write it out twice, but just watch. I can either square this first and think about it. If I square this first, it's going to get huge. And then we've got to find uh, groups of three. Or I can take the cube root and square it afterwards. Which way do you want to go? Cube root it and then square it or square it first? Mm -hmm. After or before? After. And that's only okay. because this is already a nice perfect cube. <laughs> One thousand three zeros. So this is 10 times 10 times 10. It's 10 to the third. And if you're not sure, this is 10 times 100, which is 10. 100 is 10 times 10. So it's 10 escapes, and it's still got to be squared. And the answer is 100. So 1 over 1,000 to the negative 2 thirds is equal to 100. What was the way that you put it before? Just I put it like this. Put cube root of 1,000, and you can square it before you take the cube root, <clears throat> which makes this a big number. And then I got to find groups of three afterwards. But why make it huge when you have a nice number that simplifies and then you can find the perfect? And it's just a matter of perspective. Some problems are going to be done differently. But practicing will give you a better option. So you at least know how to set it up either way. If you don't set it up either way, you won't have an idea of what you need to do. I'm going to click on number six, um, okay. where it says uh, uh, when you flip it and it goes from PM9 you know, to 3 over 2, and then you break everything down. Uh -huh. Where does the 2 go? The 2 is the square root. We don't oh, put a two. So the bottom two is just that. that is so, yeah, with well, a square root, we never put a two. Okay. So same. Okay. Yeah. Linking things. Okay. Now I'm going to show you something interesting. One team to the four thirds. So this is how we would normally do it. You got a cube root, and you either do 20 to the four. Or you do the cube root and you do 20 and you raise it to the four. Look at both of those. Which one would be the best way? I'll tell you right now, there's only one way. The first one. Because the second one, 20 is not a perfect cube. I can't, there's no three of a kind when I do this 20. 20 is four times five. There's no perfect cubes in a 20. So then I just have to raise it to the fourth and well, whatever. But if I do this, and again, don't multiply this out, don't go to 16, uh, 160,000. This is just 20 times of 20 times of 20 times of 20. Hey, there's three 20s. So one 20 survives and breaks out. There's a 20 left behind in the cube root. 20 cube root 20. Twenty to the four thirds. Four thirds, four thirds, four thirds, four thirds, four thirds. How many times can four, let me go into four even once. What's the remainder? One third. One, third. one and one third. How many 20s escaped? One. How many 20s went back into jail? 
One escaped, one went back in the cube room, one and one third. It's a mixed number. It's an improper fraction. And all it is is three goes into four once. So one whole 20 will escape. There's a remainder of one back into the cube root channel. So when you have an improper fraction as your power, you can look at it from the mixed number perspective. When we did, <clears throat> I erased it, but it was two thirds. It was something to the two thirds. I don't know what it would be. I think mean, about a thousand to the two thirds. Three doesn't go into two even, so I can't do that process. So that's a proper fraction. But when it's improper, 20 to the eight thirds. Eight over three. How many times can three go into 28 even? Two. two times, what's the remainder? Two. Two. So eight and two thirds. So this is going to be. Two twenties escape. I want to say two twenties. Twenty squared escapes. Twenty times twenty escapes. And then the cube root of twenty squared is going to be stuck in there. Okay. So you have a 400 cube root 400. Improper fraction. You treat them like a mixed number. The whole number escapes, the remainder goes back in that cube in that jail. All right, we're back at 10.